To his surprise, his thoughts didn't leap first for Percy. His primary concern was for Hazel, then for Jason, then for Percy and the others aboard the Argo, too. They'd saved him in Rome. They'd welcomed him aboard their ship. Nico had never allowed himself the luxury of friends, but the crew of the Argo, too, was as close as he'd ever come. The idea of any of them dying made him feel empty, like he was back in the giant's bronze jar, alone in the dark, subsisting only on sour pomegranate seeds. Finally, he asked, Is Hazel all right? For the moment. And the others? Who will die? Hades shook his head. Even if I were certain, I could not say. I tell you this because you are my son. You know that some deaths cannot be prevented. Some deaths should not be prevented. When the time comes, you may need to act. Nico didn't know what that meant. He didn't want to know. My son. Hades' tone was almost gentle. Whatever happens, you have earned my respect. You brought honor to our house when we stood together against Kronos in Manhattan. You risked my wrath to help Percy Jackson, guiding him to the River Styx, freeing him from my prison, pleading with me to raise the armies of Erebos to assist him. Never before have I been so harassed by one of my sons. Percy this, Percy that. I nearly blasted you to cinders. Nico took a shallow breath. The walls of the room began to tremble, dust tickling from the cracks in the walls and between the bones. I didn't do it all just for him. I did it because the whole world was in danger. Hades allowed himself the faintest smile, but there was nothing cruel in his eyes. I can entertain the possibility that you acted for multiple reasons. My point is this. You and I rose to the aid of Olympus because you convinced me to let go of my anger. I would encourage you to do likewise. My children are rarely happy. I... I would like to see you be the exception. Nico stared at his father. He didn't know what to do with that statement. He could accept many unreal things. Hordes of ghosts, magical labyrinths, travel through shadows, chapels made of bones. But tender words from the Lord of the Underworld? No, that made no sense. Over at the altar, the fiery ghost rose. He approached, burning and screaming silently. His eyes conveyed some urgent message. Ah, uh, Hades said. This is Brother Paolin. He's one of the hundreds who were burned alive in the square near the old Roman temple. The Inquisition had its headquarters there, you know. At any rate, he suggests you leave now. You have very little time before the wolves arrive. Wolves? You mean Orion's pack? Hades flicked his hand. The ghost of Brother Paolin disappeared. My son... What you are attempting, shadow travel across the world, carrying the Athena Parthenos, it may well destroy you. Thanks for the encouragements. Hades placed his hands briefly on Nico's shoulders. Nico didn't like to be touched, but somehow this brief contact with his father felt reassuring, the same way the Chapel of Bones was reassuring. Like death, his father's presence was cold and often callous, but it was real, brutally honest, incapably dependable. Nico found a sort of freedom in knowing that eventually, no matter what happened, he would end up at the foot of his father's throne. I will see you again, Hades promised. I will prepare a room for you at the palace in case you do not survive. Perhaps your chambers would look good decorated with the skulls of monks. Now I can't tell if you're joking. Hades' eyes glittered as his form began to fade. Then perhaps we are alike in some important ways. The god vanished. Suddenly the chapel felt oppressive. Thousands of hollow eye sockets staring at Nico. Where the bones that are here await yours. He hurried out of the church, hoping he remembered the way back to his friends. <laughs>